Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about mitochondria and in this video, I'm going to give you the introduction part of the mitochondria as well as the diagram and I'm also going to explain to you about the structure of the mitochondria and what are the major functions does this mitochondria plays. Okay, so coming to the introduction part of the mitochondria from the childhood, we know that this mitochondria is called as powerhouse of the cell, right? So this mitochondria is called as powerhouse of the cell. So why it is called as powerhouse of, of the cell? Because it mainly helps in the generation of ATP. And this ATP is the energy which is mainly formed in this mitochondria. And at the site of mitochondrial matrix which is present in the mitochondria, this generation of ATP takes place. So this mitochondrial matrix will be explained in the, uh, in the you know, introduction of the structure part. So I am going to explain it later. And now this force generation is nothing but the function of the mitochondria. Force generation is nothing but ability to do work. So work is nothing but muscle contraction which will be done by us, right? Muscle contraction is nothing but uh, walking or else running, you know, muscle contraction. It requires some amount of energy, right? And that energy will be uh, produced in the form of ATP by the mitochondrial matrix in the mitochondria. Okay, like this mitochondrial, mat uh, sorry, muscle contraction is one of the major function which will be placed uh, by this mitochondria cell division is nothing but uh, mitosis and meiosis right and that mitosis and meiosis uh, is a cell division which occurs uh, which occurs in a cell and this my cell division process i already explained in my previous videos the link will be given in the description box and the degradation of proteins and the membrane potential you know balancing of the membrane potential takes place in this uh, takes place by the major function of this mitochondria so these are the major major functions of this mitochondria so uh, one of the important thing which you have to remember is that in human beings i mean i'm going to saying about the adult human beings in adult human beings 50 kg of uh, atp energy will be generated per day per day 50 kg of atp energy will be generated in his body oh, i am saying in the case of only adults okay remember next how this atp will be generated this atp will be generated by an enzyme known as atp synthase this ATP synthase is the enzyme which mainly helps in the formation of ATP in such a way that that ATP will get combined with inorganic phosphate. ATP is nothing but adenosine diphosphate, right? So diphosphate is nothing but it consists of two phosphate groups. Diphosphate is nothing but it consists of two phosphate groups. And the two phosphate groups will be reacted with another phosphate group in such a way that it forms three phosphate groups. That's nothing but adenosine triphosphate. And here H plus ion will be utilized. H plus ion is nothing but it is a proton and here proton gradient will be used in such a way that it mainly helps in the formation of ATP and now let us see the structure of this ATP and here if you see this will be the structure of ATP and if you elaborate it ATP is nothing but adenosine triphosphate right so this will be the adenosine part this is the ribose sugar part and here these are the phosphate groups how, about how many phosphate groups three phosphate groups because adenosine triphosphate right so one phosphate group second phosphate group and third phosphate group so triphosphate and if you see here properly I have written the uh, reaction here because ADP plus uh, inorganic phosphate will form ATP right and ADP is nothing but adenosine diphosphate. So here this is the adenosine group, this is a ribose sugar group and diphosphate is nothing but uh, two phosphate groups. This is the first phosphate group and this will be the second phosphate group. So this resembles the structure of ADP, adenosine diphosphate and this adenosine diphosphate will get reacted with one of the phosphate group. Inorganic phosphate is nothing but one of the phosphate group and this phosphate group will be attached towards the uh, phosphate region in such a way that it forms adenosine triphosphate. That's nothing but three phosphate groups will be present. First phosphate group, second phosphate group and third phosphate group which will be attached again over here. In such a way that it forms adenosine triphosphate. So this will be the adenosine group. Uh, I, have, I, I don't have any place here so that's only reason I have written only adenosine. So for the pop proper structure of this ATP I have drawn here. So see here this will be the structure of your ATP. So in this way the ATP will be formed okay and next coming to the here these two steps are very much important and the, uh, the major function where this mitochondria will play are it mainly helps in the generation of NADH and GTP and this NADH and GTP generation you can see in the citric acid cycle and the citric acid cycle I uh, already explained in my previous videos the link will be given in the description box and next the biosynthesis of amino acids and heme groups will also be takes place by the uh, major function of this mitochondria only and coming to the ATP generation uh, the ATP generation is nothing but this formation of this ATP takes place by the oxidative phosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation is nothing but it is a complex reaction which is powered by a proton gradient and here remember this proton gradient proton gradient is nothing but which i already explained you here right h plus ion is nothing but a proton proton will be used for the formation of atp in such a way that adp will get combined with the inorganic phosphate and it forms atp and 
there, there will be a brief explanation on this oxidative phosphorylation but i will not explain in this video because the video will become uh, the length of the video will be, video will become very much long so that's only the reason i'm not going to explain this oxidative phosphorylation but remember here oxidative phosphorylation is nothing but proton gradient will be used in such a way that it mainly helps in the formation of atp adenosine triphosphate so now discussing about the structure of mitochondria so mitochondria is made up of two membranes outer and inner membrane where the outer membrane covers the organelle and the inner membrane is folded with many times which forms the cristae and if you see here this will be the structure of mitochondria and coming to this sentence mitochondria is made up of two membranes outer and inner membrane right so this will be your outer membrane this whole part is set as outer membrane and uh, this this is called as inner membrane okay this one this region is called as inner membrane like this this will be the outer membrane this will be the inner membrane so between this outer membrane and inner membrane there will be a space right this red color one which i have drawn with red color and that space is called as intermembrane space this intermembrane space is present between the outer membrane as well as the inner membrane where the outer membrane covers the organelle so this is this is the organelle these are the inner parts of the organelle right and those inner parts of the organelle will be covered by this outer membrane and next this inner organelle is folded many times which forms a cristae cristae are nothing but if you see here these are the folded regions right like this there are projections like this and that projections are called as cristae like this there will be projections and the projections are called as cristae it will be folded many times and forms this cristae so this is about the outer mitochondrial and inner mitochondrial membranes so coming to this uh, structure and here these are known as this red color dot like structures which i have drawn in this inner mitochondrial uh, you know mitochondrial matrix are known as ribosomes this red color dot like structures which i have drawn are known as ribosomes and here this is known as cristae i have said you this folded regions are called as cristae i have said you and this green color region this green color dots which i have drawn in this outer membrane are called as porins and this is called as mitochondrial matrix so in yeah, so if you see in my introduction region where if you see here in the, in the beginning i have said you that the atp energy will be generated in the mitochondrial matrix of the mitochondria right so in this mitochondrial matrix this blue color region the total blue color region which i have drawn is known as mitochondrial matrix so in that within that mitochondrial matrix uh, the atp generation takes place so how the atp generation takes place by the combination of adenosine diphosphate and one another inorganic phosphate which i explained to you before itself okay and this is the mitochondrial matrix and next this is the dna this blue color uh, one is which i have drawn is known as dna like this okay are called as dna and this is the outer membrane which i have said you and this will be the inner membrane and inner mitochondrial uh, in or in the inner membrane space and next this green color uh, square like structures which i have drawn are known as atp synthesis atp synthesis is an enzyme right and that atp synthesis enzyme plays a major role in the formation of atp where i have said you before in the introduction part itself and these are known as granules and uh, the major function of this uh, parts i'm going to say enough so firstly discussing about the ribosomes so these ribosomes are present in the mitochondrial matrix with the red color dots which i have mentioned in the diagram right and the ribosomes will mainly helps in the making of proteins okay and next mitochondrial matrix is nothing but it is a site where the generation of atp takes place which i have explained you in the uh, beginning at the introduction at the generation part itself and that generation of atp takes place by the oxidative phosphorylation process so what is that oxidative phosphorylation i already explained right uh, where the proton gradient plays a major role in the formation of atp and next this mitochondrial dna mitochondrial dna is nothing but the, with the blue color structures which i have drawn in the inter in the mitochondrial matrix are known as mitochondrial dna right and that mitochondrial dna mainly helps in the conversion of chemical energy to mechanical energy and the chemical energy will be uh, will be produced by the food which we consume and that uh, chemical then that food uh, of the mitochondrial in the will enter into the mitochondria in such a way that this chemical energy which is present in the mitochondrial membrane uh, will be will get converted to the mechanical energy and from the mitochondrial membrane it will be entered into the into the inner parts by the porins so what are the porins i am going to explain you later so next cristae cristae are nothing but if you see here the projections which i have drawn here are known as cristae and that cristae what is the main fu major function of that cristae are it mainly helps in the pro uh, it doesn't play a major role but it mainly helps in the providing the large surface area so that uh, the chemical reactions can occur properly and next granules uh, it mainly helps in the maintenance of the ionic balance of the mitochondria and uh, coming to the porins so these are the porins right so this green color uh, dot like structures which are present upon this mitochondrial uh, outer mitochondrial membrane are known as porins so these porins are also called as voltage dependent anion channels where it is shortly abbreviated as vdac and uh, in different kind of species like uh, in, if you see the case of humans or else in the mammals different kinds of vdac will be present like vdac1 vdac2 vdac3 like that okay and what are the main function of this vdac 
I mean, the what is the main function of these protein porins are? It is a type of proteins which mainly helps in the passage of hydrophilic compounds across the membrane. Okay, so this is about the structure of the mitochondria. So thank you for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, do like, do like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment in the comment box. Thank you.